All right, it's February 8th, two months before the eclipse. Taking a little day trip here to KKSR, Kayakima Scout Reservation, to scout out a possible location to view the solar eclipse of April 8, 2024. All right, it's about 11 a.m. I've been on the road for an hour, give or take. This is exit eight, Tyranza. Small little gas station with a, a mart, but it might be a, a good pit stop on the, on the way. One hour outside of Memphis. All right, I'm on I-555 North toward Jonesboro. Stop at exit eight. Exit 14 is not bad also. It's got a McDonald's and a couple other little things. So there's a few spots along the way. Again, we're about 30 minutes from Jonesboro. Exit 29 looks pretty good too. They've got a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Subway, a hotel, a Walmart, a Murphy's gas station, hardware store, not too bad. Again, this is exit 29 off of I-555 toward Jonesboro. All right, we're entering Jonesboro, Arkansas. It's uh, 11.35. I left at 10.05, so I've been driving for about an hour and a half, 12 minutes stop. So roughly an hour and 15 minutes of drive time to get to Jonesboro. See a Love's gas station here, and then of course everything else you need should be here. Jonesboro is in the path, it's on the edge of the path. About two minutes of duration, give or take, I've got to double check. Nowhere near, you know, it's not, it's not the maximum duration, but still comparable to what we saw in 2017. Again, I've got to get the exact eclipse timings. But the point being, a direct shot from Memphis gets you into the eclipse path in a little over an hour, in a little over an hour, about an hour and a half of drive time. And at least in Jonesboro, you're in the path and you can work from there. Exit 42, you got a Cracker Barrel, you got a Baymont, you got a Fairfield Inn, Come and go gas station, uh, Motel 6, Days In, Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, La Quinta, Best Western. I mean, he's got tons of motels here. Obviously, Jonesboro's got a lot of choices. Exit 46, another good exit tail end of Jonesboro. So we're leaving now. We're about 72 miles away from KKSR, about an hour and a half of drive time. All right, so about 42 miles from Hardy, 52 miles from KKSR. It's about an hour of drive time. Pretty rural road. Uh, we have an Exxon gas station back there. Not a bad little pit stop it looks like. But um, we're, we're off the uh, interstate obviously. We've just got a basically a five lane road. Two lanes on either side. Center highway and pretty light traffic today. It's about 30 miles from Hardy. See, the road is down to two lanes now. Speed is still 55, but a smaller road, narrower road. I think I got a rest area here, small. It's about 30 miles out. This 
is M. Bowden. Turn left onto US 62. Get into Hardy. Looks like there's a McDonald's up here. Valero gas station. Uh, a few other little things. The next light, turn left. Turn left onto US 62. In about one and a half miles, turn right onto Stone Creek Road. All right, this is Hardy, Arkansas. And I'll show you what's around here. We got a McDonald's right on the corner. First Baptist Church. And uh, I got some cabins up top there. And this post office, a Dollar General. And then across the street, there's a park, which I'll show you in a little while. But obviously, if you can get to this spot and it's clear, Mongolian Grill should have everything you need. So we are leaving Hardy and heading for Kayakima. A lot of narrow, winding roads through the mountains and the trees here to get from In Hardy mile, to Kayakima. Turn right onto Cherokee. two miles, turn right onto Wabash Drive. 
All right, In so we're on tier. Of a mile, turn right onto Nokomis Drive. The golf course right there. We're skipping Wabash. We're still on Cherokee. You can see a low river crossing here. We've had quite a bit of rain, but it won't flood the bridge. But I did skip Wabash because I was recommended not to do that. So we cross In this half bridge a mile, here. Turn right onto Nokomis Drive. And we turn on to Onaga, is what she's telling me. Again, I'm on Cherokee Lane. All right, this is Onaga Road. Gotta watch it here a little bit. Uh... In three quarters of a mile, keep right onto Onaga Drive. Onaga Drive. Another low river crossing. Take it easy here a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to go too far right. Piece of cake. So you can see we got uh, a few miles of gravel and dirt roads that are pretty narrow, winding, and in some spots steep. So keep that in mind if you have a trailer, an RV. My SUV does does this no problem, but um, definitely some definitely some spots to, to watch for. That's what we need right there, an RV. From Saturday night till Monday morning or Monday lunch? Saturday night till Monday lunch. If you're here for that time period, if you, I don't know if y'all are just coming in. Meals will be provided at that dining area. And you can go back in if you want. All right, cabin four. So it's a four bedroom, two bath. You got a TV, kitchen area, should be Wi-Fi in here. And then uh, we got one bedroom here, king. We got uh, another bedroom here, two twins. And then we've got Another bedroom here, two bunks. And uh, another bedroom here with uh, a couple of bunks. And then down here is your bathroom area with a uh, shower, four sinks, laundry, another shower there. One toilet and a second toilet. So that's cabin four, exclusively reserved for, for us. So that's cabin four, reserved for MAS. We got an RV spot right there with a propane tank. And you can possibly get another one down there. If you can level it off, fire pit. And there might be another spot. Maybe. Did you say we can put an RV right here? Possibly. Yeah. Power to it's going to be here. Okay. Yeah. No power. But, That's the uh, only concern. Uh, it's possible, like in the evening, you could run a power cord 
cord or something. Okay. If, you're, if you've got somebody with a generator, that would be a better idea over on this side. Generator would be better over here. Yeah, and that's cabin four. So it's 137, so we are a couple of minutes, basically 20 minutes from uh, totality. In this spot right here, obviously we have to get clear of these trees, but you get an idea, it's a cloudy day of uh, where the sun would be. We do have a wide open field area here though. So this is, you said the parade field? Yeah, the Boy Scouts flag area. Boy Scouts flag area, gotcha. So that's the dining hall. Yeah. You can see what's around here. So it's uh, about 10 minutes from Max Eclipse right now. Let's see where the sun would be located. Let's give a view of the horizon here. So that's the, uh, you said that's a dining hall? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll give you an idea of where the sun would be. It's obviously a cloudy day today. You know, it'd be above the trees. All right, here's another viewing spot behind the uh, dining hall. The sun is clouded out, of course. February 8th. I'll just show you. That's where the that's where we were earlier. So this is kind of a wide open spot. And again, I'm looking in the opposite direction of the sun right now. It's a little after 2 p.m., so the eclipse would be over officially. If it were today, obviously we wouldn't see it. But if we did have clear skies today, then the sun would be high enough up from this spot where we could catch it. And if we came the night before, it may not be a bad spot for stargazing. All right, back in Hardy. I got a couple of very big events planned here on April 8th. So this is US 62 to go the other way takes you to Ash Flat. It's an alternative way to get in, maybe to avoid eclipse traffic. All right, just stopped in Hardy for lunch and now I'm on my way back. The road into Kayakima is work. A couple of miles of gravel and somewhat windy, but the path out was a lot easier than the path in. So I don't know the exact roads, but there is a way to get there without it being as cumbersome as the way I came in. So Hardy, if it's clear, potentially a great spot, but keep in mind there are two large events planned at both parks. One, they're expecting about 13,000 people. The other one, six or 7,000. And every restaurant, every hotel, every Airbnb, the Walmarts will all be jam packed. That's what I'm told. So if you're going to make a day trip out of it, plan to leave very early and take everything you need with you. Don't assume you can stop conveniently for a pit stop, whether it's gas or restroom or food, obviously, if you're trying to order from a restaurant or buy something at a grocery store, because uh, likely it will be swamped with people. And when I say leave early, I'm talking like one or two in the morning if you're gonna drive from Memphis. I was told also you should, pla you should plan, ideally to be done with your travel around 6 a.m. I know that sounds like it's awfully early, but the eclipse isn't gonna wait. And if you have delays due to traffic, especially if you get into some of these congested two lane roads, they could set you back a couple hours. We're also exploring alternate routes to get in from Conway through Batesville and I'll have more clarity hopefully on alternate routes to avoid some of the events that they're having that are going to be congested with a lot of people so and lastly it all comes down to weather you saw what the skies were today and uh, Rhonda the person that I met at KKSR she just said very typical for April skies so we had a favorable forecast a year ago 2023 April 8th year before it was not good so it's been touch and go if you look back the last several years so don't get your hopes up and keep watching the weather closely because the clouds ultimately will determine everything and i would say probability wise 
if I had to guess, a 30 to 40% chance best that it's going to work out. So more than 50%. I'm, I'm less than 50% confident that Hardy and KKSR are going to be clear on Eclipse Day. I'm, I'm, if I had to guess, probably 30 to 40%. I could be wrong. So anyway, just a quick look here. We do have a cabin reserved for anyone who's willing to help out and some RV spots and there is plenty of space to set up. So let's just hope for clear skies.